I was going to title this episode, You Love Them Because They Need You. Because I think that encapsulates the idea of this interview discussion topic really well, but it doesn't really tell you what the episode's about, so I'm going to call it something else and something better so that you know what I'm going to talk about today. This is probably the key response and talking point during interviews, and people really struggle with it. Remember to hit subscribe. Subscribe to the job interview experience on your podcast player so you don't miss the key episode that will make the difference in your job search and career. Questions like, what attracted you to this position? Why did you apply? How do your skills align? What do you like about our company? What have you found out about us that attracted you to work here? How do you see yourself fitting in here? But mostly, you know, why did you apply to the position? What attracts you here? How do your skills align? For the skills question, we can get more into that, but more about just the company, why did you apply? So many people, whether it be their cover letter or in their interview, get this wildly, wildly wrong. They t in instantly tell, tell the truth, which is good. The key to interviewing well and following this podcast is don't lie, but you need to make it about them and not you. So a common response I hear or would hear during interviews is I'd say, what attracted you to this position? Why did you apply here? People would say, oh, the commute is way shorter or my friend works here. Things that seem really good. I love the company culture. And I'll exaggerate here, but like the ping pong tables, the fact that I can work from home a couple days a week is huge for me, or everyone here seems really nice. So all the things that you truly like about the job, which should be a good answer. And it is, it's better than saying, well, you know, you replied to my application and it's really tough out there. And I've had all these interviews and I'm really hoping to, to work here, which some people say, I've been applying, I haven't gotten anywhere. So I'm, I really like that you guys followed up with me and that you like my skills. What this should be about is how you benefit them. And that might sound goofy, but you need to say it in such a way that it all makes sense so that they see the benefit of hiring you and you connect the dots of your benefits to them. Say I'm asked that question. Well, I always use marketing because it's easy, but we'll say I'm applying to a marketing director role. They say, what attracted you to this position or what do you like about our company? Why'd you apply here? The better answer would be in the last three years with my process of creating marketing campaigns, I've helped my company get a 25% better ROI and we've increased sales by 48%. The amount of energy I have and the skill set that I've put together to make this possible is really rewarding to me. And I've seen the need for this at your company, xyz.com. And I'm so eager to apply these to your company to get you similar results. Because when I do, I'm putting this unique skill set that I've built with these proven results, I'm putting this to use. And from what I've learned about your company, what you do, the people that work here, your mission, your product, I find that incredibly rewarding. And together, I know we can take this department to a better place. And when you get the results that I bring to the table, you're going to be a happier, healthier company. And I'm going to be an employee that's putting my best skills to use. You can do that for so many things. Say you're a school teacher. They say... Why do you want to work at our school? Why do you want to work at our university? Instead of saying, well, I live close by. I can walk to school. I love that. Or, um, you know, I really love the students or I love this. You talk about the outcomes. You'd say, in my five years of teaching or my 15 years of teaching, I've seen time and time again, the students that I interact with blossom. And that happens because of my ability to connect the dots between the subjects that I teach and their unique learning styles, whether it be an entire class, which changes. Every class is different every year. Every generation is different, but also one-on-one -on -one with students. I've driven the outcomes they need 
better grades, better comprehension, and excitement to do great work when they go out in the world and apply these skills, helping them understand how taking time to learn things that are maybe annoying, like algebra or geometry, making sense of that and helping them understand how learning this will pay dividends their whole career. That's what I do as a teacher. That's been proven by my last five classes. Their grades within our school and within our district have been overwhelmingly positive and above the average we've had. I want to bring that to your school because it's important for kids in this location to learn this and be able to have the results that I bring. Not to mention your fantastic staff, everybody that I've met here, how we align with our views and vision of education. I've applied because I want to help the students at your school have these outcomes. That's my calling. That's what I'm good at. And that's what I do. I'm really excited to be able to do that for the kids here. If that sounds cheesy to you, maybe you think that's cheesy. It's not. That's what companies want to hear. They might not even know it yet that that's what they want to hear because they've never heard this before. But here you are with the answer to their question. Who do we hire? Here you are with the solution to their problem. This person can do exactly what we need and they understand how to do it. They hire for an outcome. Sometimes they hire because a, a position is open, right? Maybe someone left, a, a school teacher left, or the last marketing director got promoted or went to a different company. But that position exists for an outcome. And for you listeners, once you understand that, the whole conversation should change. These companies, they don't hire because they want to make someone happy, because they want the lottery ticket to go out and someone gets the job, right? The winning ticket. Nobody does that. I've never seen a job exist or a company exist just to create jobs. They have something that they need and they're looking for the person who can do it. And if you can do it, but you come in and you make it all about yourself, you're not understanding, vocalizing what it is that they need. When there's misalignment there and you say it wrong, they need a marketing director that can capture people for the carbonated water market. And when you come in, you say, I want to work here because it's five minutes away and my friends work here and they say that the culture is really good and the work-life balance is really awesome. You don't understand the mission. The mission is to help through you and your department capture more market of bubbly carbonated water, whatever it is. I don't drink bubbly, by the way. What... I'm saying here, sorry about the bubbly comment. I've had it before, but uh, I'm not plugging them. What I'm saying here is when you answer like that, you are perfectly aligned with their needs. And you should be, because when you show up, your job shouldn't be a short commute. Your job shouldn't be working with friends. Those are benefits, but they're benefits to you. Whether you drive an hour or five minutes to get to a job, that really doesn't impact the company that much. Yeah, it's nice that you're close. Maybe you're not late or you're not having to drive as much and have as many carbon emissions, but really they want you to do the job. And saying things this way works. I've seen it a thousand times. I've coached a ton of people on realigning their mission, their purpose in the role. When you talk to companies this way, it changes the way they see you because they understand you understand what it is that they need done. Speaking of listeners just like you, I want to hit on a couple quick reviews. I have a insane success story that I'm not going to read today. It's going to come up in an episode later. I have to get permission to to share it really quick. But let me read a couple of these really quick. This is from Ben C94 in the United Kingdom. He says, thank you. I haven't had much experience with job interviews. I'm 29 and have been in the same job and progressed throughout the company for the last 10 years. I applied for a job I didn't think I would ever get. Within a day, I got an interview. I had a week to prepare. Listening to your podcast not only helped my interview techniques, it gave me much more confidence. Can I say without this podcast, I would have landed this job? Honestly, I don't know, but I wouldn't want to chance it. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Here's one more from EOBO13. You are my interview guru over the last months. It's from the United States, by the way. 
Over the last months, I've been queuing up your episodes and listening to them repeatedly for their honest, intention-driven advice. I'm proud to say that I've landed my dream job. And while it's my background experience that brought me here, it was this podcast that put me into the right headspace and mind space to seal the deal. Your insights, your collaborators, and your truly applicable and action-oriented advice are so relevant and spot on. I would go for trail runs as I prepared for multi-round interviews with my new employer. You've kept me focused and sane when emotions and stress were high. I wanted to thank you for sharing your tips and tricks with the world in this way. I literally felt like I had an insider's advantage during my conversations and was able to be so much more present and authentic, which further excites me to know I have vetted the company to fit my needs as much as they have vetted me. I already know it's going to be a good adventure. Thank you for what you do and good luck to all the fellow listeners pursuing their next dream job too. And I really like how EO Bo 13 wish all of you luck. They're listening now. I I do the same, but I don't wish you luck. I give you this content. So let's get back to the content of this episode. My challenge for you, my coaching for you is to ask yourself this question for the next company you talk to and write it down. It can be a little longer. This can be a two, three minute answer. It could be 30 seconds, depending on your style. But what success have you had? What do you do really well? And how does it help this company and their mission? From the job description, you should be able to read through it and understand what you need to do. Small picture, that's really important, maybe most important, right? The hard skills day to day. But how does that impact the company in a bigger way? If it's a huge organization, you might feel like you can't make an organizational wide impact. Yes, you can. Maybe you're faster at what you do. Maybe you can take more calls per minute. Maybe your quality level is higher than anyone else's. It can be so many things. It could be a tiny nonprofit where you're working one-on-one with the people that they serve. What is it that you do that fills their need, accomplishes their goal. This doesn't have to be this huge thing. Just apply what you're good at and make that your talking point. This is also what makes an incredible cover letter. If you've listened to past cover letter episodes, think about this. In your cover letter, you should be saying how you help the company and what your skills are that do that. You should be able to say it in a brief way. If you haven't applied yet, use the exact same speech for your cover letter as for your response to this question. Although the cover letter should be shorter, you should be able to do this in like five to six sentences total in your cover letter, and you can make it longer during your interview. If you're not asked this question, and maybe this is the key to the episode, with what I've told you here, if you're not asked this question, you should still say this during your interview. You should plug this, whether it be at the end of your interview, or if you're asked something similar that you think you can fit this in with. If you're asked something that's kind of similar, but you need to push this into your interview, make sure you answer the question first, right? So if you're asked the strengths question, what are your strengths? And you say, this is my top strength. And what I've done is use these strengths at my last employer. These were the results. This was the outcome and applied here because I know I can do this at a larger scale with more volume, touching a customer base that I can connect your company with in a more meaningful way, whatever it is. So you transition into this. If you transition into this and you plug it in for a question that's not the exact question, and then you're asked later on, why did you apply here? What makes you want to work with this company? What do you like about us? You can say the same thing over again. Drive the message home. You'll word it a little bit differently each time unless you're amazingly good at remembering word for what to say. This is a key. And if there's a job that you can't do this for, you're thinking really hard and you're like, what do my skills do? What have I gotten better at? What are the results I get? And how can I get that for this company? If you really can't find that, Maybe this shouldn't be the top job that you apply for. You can still apply, but if there's nothing there for you to find, they're definitely not going to see it. 
because they can only read so far between the lines of your resume. If you're not preaching your outcomes for them based off evidence of what you're good at, or even potential, that's perfectly fine if it's just potential. If you can't find that, maybe you should focus on other jobs, whether it's job titles or just different companies, different overall needs that they have. If you don't apply this to your job interview and or cover letter, the rest of the podcasts will help, but you aren't putting your best foot forward. I really want to emphasize how important this is and what a big impact it will make. And for some of you who feel like you're still processing this because it's new, shift your focus onto this, what I'm sharing, because this is how you go from a job seeker, a job wanter, a checklist filler into an outcome for a company, a results generator, an outcome driver, and more important than all of those things, someone who simply understands what they want. I'll try and put this into comparison really quickly to close. Say your car breaks down on the side of the road. You you call the mechanic hotline and they say, we're going to send a couple mechanics and probably one of them will show up or something like that. Mechanic shows up and before anything else, they just start saying, hey, this is really great because I was just down the street having a burger. Even though it still took me an hour, the drive for me was really quick. And they say, hey, look, I get 70 degrees outside. It's going to be a nice day for me to work. And they even say, hey, you seem like really great people. I'm really excited to work on your car because you all seem so nice. You're hearing all of that. Oh, this, this person's super nice. I like how friendly they are. That's great. But you're like, I don't really care. I get, dude, it took you two hours. I don't care that the burger joint you were at was five minutes away. I don't care that Perkins is super close. You got here as soon as everyone else got here. Everyone else was two hours away. Let's say you have a Toyota Camry. And they say, hey, I only work on Toyotas. 90% of it's Camrys. Based off of what I heard on the call of like this, you know, your steering wheel did this thing and it made this noise. I know exactly what this is. And... This is going to be cheaper for you because I know exactly what problem to go to. I fixed five of these today. I've probably fixed 700 of them this year. I know exactly what to do. I have the part in my car because this is my specialty. This is what I do for people. And I'm going to get you back on the road in about 30 minutes. And the best thing is your car is going to be more fuel efficient because I know this little thing you do where you install this a certain way where... The factory used to install them this way, but the new way makes it more efficient. This is Toyota's protocol. No one else does it because most people don't know about it. And I've actually prepped all this these parts in my car. Okay, this is getting a little too long. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. It's getting too long. But you get the point here. They instantly make it about you and all of the benefits to you of them being there. Not the five-minute drive. Not the nice weather. They say, I have the part. I know exactly what to do. I can do it fast. Things are going to be better than they were before because of me and the things I do that no one else does. That's applying this to your life. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. This is super important. I don't know what I'm gonna title the episode yet, but you love them because they need you. That puts a smile on your face, that you have the exact skills, you know the exact thing to do to help this company, and that should be invigorating. The short commute, the higher salary, the awesome culture, the remote work. Yes, those should be key. That's about you. But they're not in the business of being about you. They're in the business of marketing their sparkly, bubbly water. And so make it about them. Drive them forward. And when you have that attitude and you can shift your mindset that way for real beyond the interview, you will produce for them. And this goes into your long-term career. They will promote you. They will find more difficult, challenging, bigger projects. You will be noticed. You will talk about the company differently because this isn't about you. This is about them. But the things in your life that are priorities will be impacted and improved because you will get better raises. You will rise in the ranks. You will speak to leaders at the company the way they speak, which is about the 
company's bottom line or their growth or their market share, whatever else it is. Thank you for listening to the Job Interview Experience. I'm doing one-on-one -on -one interview coaching. Go to jobinterviewexperience.com to learn more. I share stuff like this and way, way more stuff I can't share on the podcast. My best advice, because the best advice is tailored exactly to you. And person by person, I am making a huge impact on careers. I'm helping people get offers, bigger offers at better companies. I'm helping people navigate tricky situations and come out ahead. Even if you don't want to do interview coaching with me, go read the testimonials. They're all real. I think every one of them, every person I've worked with has come from the podcast. So they're all podcast listeners, just like you. Every one of them is real. I don't put their last names on because they want the privacy and I want the privacy for them. Go to jobinterviewexperience.com. Check out my interview coach. It's one-on-one, -on -one, me and you. We can do a mock interview. We can work on your resume. We'll make things better together. The link for that is in this episode's description. In the meantime, thanks for listening. I really, truly, deeply hope you adopt this thought process about how you can help the company and making that motivator and that way of thinking your talking point and your message during the interview even better if you can inject that into your resume and repeat that same message, create some consistency and repetition, take that message from the cover letter, bring it into your job interview. It will make a wild difference. They will see you differently. They will want you on their team because you demonstrate, you know what they want, you know how to do it, and you're eager to do it for them. Thanks for listening to the job interview experience.